Hey, good afternoon. So today we're going to discuss the second to the last topic for this course. Uh, the topic is called uh, Support Vector Machine, lecture number six. Okay, once we finish this, then we'll go to artificial neural network, and then that's it. We're done. Okay, so let's uh, start now. So Support Vector Machine, uh, excuse me. So before we go to the support vector machine, let's just have some review of all the other uh, methods that we discussed. So for polynomial regression, which was our first uh, machine learning method, uh, we consider it to be machine learning method, we are going to uh, estimate a function of a given data x. So the data x and t, so we use that function a polynomial function that will approximate an output y, okay, based on however we design our polynomial, to whatever degree and to whatever uh, weights that we have, okay? Now, of course, our estimation will have a difference between the actual value t, okay? This is the table of data for given input x, the output T is recorded. So for us, for a given input X with a polynomial regression or the polynomial estimates with a given input X, we have an output Y that is computed from that estimate. And so there is an error based on our computed value versus the actual value. And so we use this error in order to op optimize or to search the optimal value of the weights. And so the error function is given this, and we take the derivative or the gradient of this error function, which is this equation, and we use this function to use a gradient descent method in order to optimize the values of the weights of the polynomial. That we understand. Next, we went on to the decision trees. So we know that, again, we are going to estimate a function. This time, the function is not a polynomial function, but a function of a tree-like structure that can help us in the decision-making process. So, for example, the input function f and the, in, uh, the inputs into the function f, and we'll have a, a decision, okay? So now, uh, based on that decision, which is the leaf, the, the leaf of our trees from the, from the root or from the stump, we are going to decide which layer among all the parameters, among all the input parameters, which one be which which one will be chosen as our first or second or third layer in the decision tree. And these equations are used: information gain, the uh, entropy, as well as the uh, dependent in entropy or the relative entropy, we use all these uh, equations in order to give us the value of the highest gain. The highest gain, we take the highest information gain. Okay, so the highest information gain will be the parameter with the highest uncertainty. And so we use those as the first, I mean, the more prioritized layer in our decision tree. So as we go up to the branches and up to the leaves, then the uncertainty of our input parameter of our parameter becomes lesser and lesser. Okay? That means that as we go higher into the leaves, our decision becomes more and more definite. Okay? So now, in terms of Bayes' rule, this is the general equation of the Bayes' rule. P of Y given X is equal to probability of Y of X given Y, probability of Y divided by probability of X. Okay, so this is a general equation, and we apply certain events here. There are examples that we use. Excuse me. To check which event is highly most likely to be occurring. Again, it will help help us in our decision making process. If some event is occurring, and then we can most likely to occur, then we can make our decisions on what to do, depending on on what we plan to do. So for uh, a naive Bayes rule, so naive Bayes rule is just an estimate of the Bayes rule. So critical to this estimate is the idea of 
uh, probability dependence, where each event, in this case, the probability dependence of an event. So all events dependent on one event can be rewritten in terms of the chain rule of probability dependence. And then we written in this way that each event is dependent to the rest of the other events multiplied by the next event dependent on the rest of other events. Okay, and so on. Until we say that we make the assumption that each event is independent of each other and so the dependence can be removed such that each event or each parameter D1 is dependent now on the, the, the uh, given uh, output or the given the choice of output or given the choice of, of input parameter CJ and so on. Okay, so now we have uh, we have uh, two uh, equations that we use, whether it is maximum a priori, where we disregard or we don't include in the equation the denominator of the base rule and then choose the maximum argument or the maximum likelihood where we disregard or we don't include in the computation the denominator as well as the probability of each of the possible outcomes. Okay, so now we simplify the uh, base rule a lot in terms of probability of the big D or given all the parameters, uh, probability of all the parameters given the output or given the choice of output H, okay? Uh, it can be yes or no. Okay, now we are done. So we go to uh, vector support vector machine. Okay, so support vector machine is one of the best performing, if not the best performing, most people will argue that is the best performing uh, classification algorithm. Okay, where in the, uh, the, the, the basic principle of a uh, support vector machine is a linear classification. Okay, especially for linear problems, that means what uh, linear problems, meaning problems that can be linearly classified, linearly classified, that means that we can draw a line to separate the clusters, okay? So just like in this case, okay? So these are two data, two visualization of two uh, data sets. One, there's this blue and the red, uh, we can draw a line in between, very easy, a straight line in between. But for the second set here, we cannot draw a straight line to do, that will separate them. But for example, we can draw a circle around the blue dots. Then with that circle, we can separate already the blue dots from the red triangles, okay? So in this case here, you are also given the data, X, I, Y, I. So what is X, I, and Y, I here? Well, here, we can say that, okay, we can draw these are locations. We can draw the X here, X axis, and we can draw the Y axis. So therefore, in each dot, therefore, has a, has a coordinate. So this is, we can say that that point has X1, Y1. Okay. While the next point has, okay, maybe this point one, point two, x two and y two, okay, number three, another coordinates. Ah, oh, sorry, this is not. And so on. Okay, so based on the location, we can also, or we can even look here. So each of these points have some coordinates. Okay, now we can say that so it goes from xi, okay, so this is the i index. And you have an X I, that is X I, that means X, okay, X I, X of vector I is composed of, in this case, we can say X and Y. 
Excuse me. I. Okay. That means the X is a uh, the X uh, uh, board face I is a vector, a vector, a pair of X and Y coordinates. So in this case here, this is your X one, the vector. Okay, and then another vector X two. Okay, and then another vector X three. So I hope this is clear. Okay, so each of them, the xi here is an element of the real value d, where d is the number of components. So in this case here, if it's linear, I mean it's in the plane, so it's two components, x and y. So where your yi is the classification. So yi can be minus one or one or zero or one or some other classification. So that when you input your parameter x, okay, your parameter x, i, which is composing of a vector, I mean composing of two values, x and y, so in this case it's a vector, uh, a vector of two components, x and y, it can be, if we input that equation or that value of x, i, the first component and the first data, it is greater than or equal to zero, then classification is positive one, or less than zero, classification is negative one. So there are two classifications in this case. So probably we can assign positive one. Let's just say this is the classification of positive one, such that the dots are blue and circular. And then here, okay, this is the... Positive one, the other one is negative one. So in this case, it's negative, negative, and so that classification can be assigned as negative one, and so the the color is red, and it's a triangle. Separate, just visually separated. Okay. So in this case, again, this can be classified. Uh, well, we say that uh, the uh, the point or the output. The output or the classification yi, remember your yi can be positive one or negative one, multiplied by the function of x and y. So this output multiplied by the function, which is can be greater than equal to zero or can be less than zero. As you can see, this function can be greater than or equal to zero. If you multiply it with the output positive, positive y, then this one is always greater than zero or greater than or equal to zero as well. So next here, so the same x, if it's less than zero, the output of classification is minus one. And so if you multiply this, this f of x i, which is already less than zero, multiplied by the minus one, this is classification, then it remains positive. And so here, this is for the correct classification. Therefore, we use y i times the function to be greater than zero. Okay, so those are mathematical equations that we need to remember so that we can learn further on the way to Okay, on our uh, discussion. Okay, so now, so we say of a linear, uh, linear linear separability. Okay, so linear separability meaning two uh, classifications or two clusters can be uh, two clusters can be classified or can be separated by a straight line. So in this case here. So this is very simple, linearly separable. The other one is a little bit, uh, you know, uh, quite complicated. So you have to slant a little bit in order to separate them. But in both cases, you can create a line, or you can draw a straight line in on the paper to separate, or on the plane to separate the two objects that are being classified. So here it is successfully classified as the blue dots versus the red triangles. However, in this case, at the bottom part, they are not linearly separable. Okay? Why they are not linearly separable? Are you there? Can I see your video? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Why is it? It says it is not linearly separable. 
because they cannot be separated by a straight line. Okay. Yes. Okay. So here, if you draw a straight line here. You draw a straight line there. Okay. Well, we separate the red triangles from the blue dots, but there's one red triangle here. Okay. So it is not, although it's only one, we can say, arguably, we can say it's an outlier. So we can still do it. It's still a good approximation. But it's not perfect. Okay. There may be a way of doing it. Maybe for now we see the red dot, the red triangle here, but, but maybe in other cases there's a lot of red triangles there, other red triangles here like that. Then in that case you cannot anymore ignore it and say it's the that triangle was an outlier. Okay? So anyway, that is not linearly separable. The other one is yeah, you cannot draw a line, but again you can draw a circle. So in this case here, they're still separable, but not linearly separable. Okay. So we go to the next. So for linear classifiers, it has the form. Okay. That classifier, so there is a function f of x that separates the two uh, clusters. Okay. So our purpose then is to find what is this function. Again, always we are doing in all of these things that we are doing, we are looking for that function that will give us certain result. So in this case here, this function for the support vector machine a linear classifier, the function is a line. Okay? It is a straight line that will separate the given x input. Okay? Such that when you put the input x with the corresponding w, the weights value, as well as the bias value, okay? When you use them, it will result into two classifications. For example, here, it can be, if you are here, if you plug in the data of this point into f of x, it will result into greater than zero, okay? While if you plug in this data into f of x, then the result of f of x is a negative value, that is greater than, less than zero, okay? And so here, they are nicely separable. And on the line itself, we say that the function is equal to zero. Okay? So that's the, the, in the, the line where that separates the two classifications. That linearly separates the two classifications. Okay? So in 2D, the discriminant is a line. So we know that okay? in the two-dimensional space. And W is normal to the line, and D is the bias. W is the weight factor, okay? So now we need to know why W or the weight is normal to the line. So which line? This line. Okay, that line. That line that separates them. So there are certain characteristics of that line that we need to investigate for to fully understand support vector machine. So first of all, this line we say that is the weights vector. So the weights will determine the characteristic of that line. So in that case here, when is this, uh, uh, when, when, what is the characteristic of that line that's standing up? What is the slope of that line? What is the slope? It's infinity. It is infinity. Yeah, why it is infinity? Because uh, there's a very small difference between if you pick two points on the line and you try to find the difference between them, the, the, the difference between them along the x, it will be very small. So, yeah, what is the slope? The, 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 the equation of the slope? It's y1 minus y2 over x1 minus x2. Delta y over delta x. Right. So, if delta x is really, really small, then. Delta x is zero. Yeah. x doesn't change. 
if that's a vertical line, yeah? And so you have the denominator that is equal to zero. Okay? So anyway, the slope of the line is undefined, but in, then when it's flat, the slope of the line is equal to zero, m is equal to zero, okay? So now what we are, I mean, just some uh, simple observation, I mean, th those are basic information of uh, a line. So we are playing around with the values of W, which is in this case the slope of that, that will determine the slope of our line versus the bias. The bias is where, where the, the line will be located. It can affect, if it's just zero, then it will be around where the origin is. If you have bias W uh, B, then you can be around. Okay, in that plane. Okay. So next. So the percept the perceptron classifier. So we are given uh, input data x. Okay. So what is x i and what is the output y minus one and one? So how does it look like? Yeah. So let's look at this. Okay. There we always say that there's always an x i, and there's an output y i. That is that one minus one or one. Okay, so how does it look like? So in the table, then you have x. Okay, in the table, you remember your x is a vector. It's composed of x and y. So maybe you have zero point one x and zero point two like that. Then the classification is positive one. So for example, here. Let's just say create a okay. So here you have zero point one and so on, yeah. And then here the same thing. Okay, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, and so on, yeah? So now, let's create a classification. So some points here, mm, that point, versus other points here. Okay, so now we need to find what is this F? What is that F that will give us that separation? So now, so before we do that, let's record first the X and the Y. So in this case, 0 0.2 and 0 0.2. So this is 0 0.2, it's not 0 0.1. Okay, that's 0 0.2, okay. 0.2 and 0.2, the other one is 0.3 and 0.3. Also, here, let's just say here is positive one and here is negative one. Okay, so 0.3 and 0.3, also positive one and 0.2 and 3, 4, 5. 0 0.2 and 0.5. Okay, so in that case also positive one, because the orange is a positive one. So in this case here, so point three, four, five, six, six point five and zero point two. Okay, so classification here is minus one. Okay. So the same thing here, mine uh, zero point, ah, is it zero point five? I think zero point six, uh, zero point sixty five. And then three, four, five, let's come on five. Okay, now, so that is the data, yeah? So given that data, we need to know 
Okay, we can, okay, sorry. Let's just complete it. So this is point three and three, four, five, six, seven. Point three and seven. So point three and zero point seven. And then our classification is minus one. Ah. There's a eraser there. Ah. Minus one. Okay. Did we represent already everything? So how many points are there? One, two, three, four, five, six. So there are also six points. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. And here you say that the that the golden uh, that the golden objects there, the classification is minus one. And so we record the coordinates. So that's the coordinate of that. And this is the fourth one, the fifth one, and the sixth one. Okay. Here this is so first one, second one, and third one. Okay. Don't you see that and their the classification? It looks like that data here are all extracted here already. You agree? You agree? Or there are still some missing information? No more. Okay. That's the data that is derived from this graph. Okay. So now, okay, because that given data, we need to know what is that function f, this one. What is that function f given x that will give us the classification automatically? That given input x, for example, you input this into that function, it will result into, in this case here, uh, we say that the classification is positive 1 if the greater than okay, the, the function value is greater than 0. And here, the function value is less than 1. And so we have the values also. The computed values is negative one. Okay? I mean less than, sorry, it's less than zero. Okay? So now, let's uh, let's continue. So, given that it is linearly separable, okay, and then that x, i, we know that, and categories minus one and one, so there's a classification, we find a weight w such that the discriminant function f of x W transpose x i plus b separates. Okay, so in our case here, is there control z? No, I cannot control z. Okay, that means that this function f of x can separate linearly those uh, clusters that we have shown. Okay, so how do we now? The problem is how do we find the values of w and b in order for us to define the line? That's all. Okay? That's all that is needed by support vector machine. We want to know what are the values of W and B so that we can separate those two uh, clusters, classifying them about uh, pro probably negative one and the other one is positive one. Okay? So because this is linearly separable data, our function is in terms of a line. But for other functions that are not linearly separable, your, your function will be different, okay? Depending on, on where you want to, to bring the data, for which space do you want to bring, and then the, the line also, or whatever, hyperplane plane, or I don't know how, the, how we can uh, specify the classification, uh, you know, parameter, whether it's a line or a hyperplane, in this case it is a straight line, or it could be a curve, yeah, that can be defined to separate the two data uh, cleanly, okay? So, so the problem there now is how do we find the W and the B so that we can get the optimal F? Okay, what do you suggest? We should find the value of W and B so that we can use this to linearly separate two clusters. 
So how do we do that? Again, we come back to our previous method of looking at that function and getting the gradient of that function or the gradient of the parameter so that we will be able to linearly classify based on the x, the, the, the input x that we can classify now through computation to say, ah, this new information, this x is new, but then we know where it will go based on our, our, on our previous uh, discussion, okay? So the x will go according to this equation, okay? So it's greater than zero, it remains in that, uh, in the in that data set that you have shown is, is is less than zero then it goes to the other side okay so the principal algorithm we have the classifier so that we, this one we know already so that your w tilde uh, transpose multiplied by your x and for tilde plus w sub zero is what we are going to do here is that we want to include this part here, W sub zero, into the equation. So now we say you put W sub zero multiplied by one. Okay. So W, W times W sub zero times a one. So you have W, okay, the W weights of the separating uh, line. Okay, so multiplied by W now includes the W sub zero. Okay, so the entire line plus the bias is included as W sub zero. Now your X is X one plus one, which is the bias. Okay, so if you include this one, if you multiply them, so for example, W tilde multiplied by W zero, Okay, so we multiply this with x1, comma 1. Okay, so if we multiply that, what will happen? Transpose, oh sorry, this is the transpose. Okay. So that means W multiplied by W sub zero, that's the vector, multiplied by X, this is I, multiplied by Y. So you can see W1 multiplied by XI, um, uh, the bias w sub zero okay and so this is your x okay so it's just rewriting into two vectors so that you can easily handle and now you have two vectors you have the weights now if x is mass classified then okay so we, we write this we write the equations here combine the w as well as the bias okay so we write the w is zero multiplied by one times the rest of the other parameters excuse me and so now how do we decide to compute for the optimal w okay again we use the same principle we do before we used before Okay, we optimize by computing gradient descent method. So what is the gradient descent method that we are going to use? So we will choose on the error term of the classification. We check the error term of the classification. You make that as our gradient, and then that's it. We run the computation several times until it gives us a satisfactory value. Okay? So now, how do we do so now we initialize your w okay so we have done this several times so you have w in this case here if it was just a plane so w0 w1 and w2 okay so how so let's just initialize some random value 
and then cycle through the points of X and Y so that we will know whether you are having, uh, you are doing the correct uh, way of updating your W. So based on this one, the sine of F of XI times XI. So for now, let's just consider this as correct. But then this part here, this is a gradient of some, in the previous discussion, this is the gradient of error, okay, based on the change of the change of the weight, I. Okay, so for now, it is just, let's just simply, this is just an introduction. Let's just say that for now, we still do an updated value of W based on the gradient descent method where this part here will try to minimize the error. Okay, that is the minimize of the error, whatever error is that of the data versus the output value. And to say that once that error is minimized, then you will reach the optimal value of W such that whatever, once the W is here, so when you say W, it includes B, okay? So now we can rewrite this as F of X times W multiplied by transpose of Xi, okay? So once we know the value of W, that's it, we're done. Any question? What's it? No, no questions. Okay, please take note on how we write the vectors of Ws as well as the, uh, the inputs. Okay, so let's continue. These are just discussion on how do we find the optimal value of the function, separation function, f of x. f of the xi, that is our input x. Okay, so we check the two-dimensional example, we initialize w. And then we circle through the data. We know this already, that your xi, this is the classification, let's just say positive one or plus one, okay? And minus one, that's the classification. And your xi is, can be your value of the x vector, okay? X vector i, which is some value of xi and yi. Okay, these are the coefficients, and then we transpose it, that's fine. Okay, so that's xi, okay, multiplied by the output of plus y, uh, plus one and minus one. Okay, so now, if xi is misclassified, okay, that means that in this case, if we, we put your xi, okay, we put into the function of f of x, okay? And it is misclassified, then we update our w, okay? Because this is not the correct w, okay? So we update our w to correct that in order to get a new w. So how this one is computed, we are going to discuss how, okay? But the point is that here, so before the update, okay? Before the update, there is a misclassification of your line that is stated to be here, but then it is misclassifying one point, okay? So this is the, the way, it's just showing the way to cycle through all the possible values of W. So now you updated. So this is your initial value, this is your XI, this is the W, and this is your classification line. Now we go, we update it to a new classification to in order to account for this this uh, outlier and so now it transferred to that but then it doesn't it now includes the blue in that part okay well the better way to do is this one well this one here we are seeing it or yeah maybe that this one here we are saying seeing it but probably okay there are other things behind it and there are other computations that we need to discuss, okay? So now, 
So after convergence, then we say that each of your alpha i, okay, alpha i is just some parameters that we will discuss later, given the input. Okay, this is another way of computing your w. Okay, for now, just uh, keep that in mind that these are the alpha is a parameter that we are going to solve. Another way of directly computing okay, okay, here, okay, this is the gradient that we can consider it as a gradient in our gradient descent method or the correcting factor that we use in order to update your x. Okay, but in, in a way, after the convergence, then this correcting factor, if we add, okay, the h of the alpha is multiplied by the input, okay, we add them all together, this one will also give us the results of your optimal weights. Okay. So, let's keep that in mind uh, and look at some examples. So, these are real examples. So, the same thing here, we are going to uh, there are two that types of data. The other one is X, blue X, and the other one is R, the red circles. Okay? So in this case, maybe it will take a long time to, to uh, compute, but nevertheless, we are going to consider on how we are going to solve this using the perceptron, perceptron, perceptron example. Is that function f of X that is uh, aligned? That is uh, aligned? And it has two parameters x and I mean, there's two values that we're looking for, or the weights, the weights plus the bias, or weights altogether. Okay, so now what are the possible uh, solutions? So, what we want to do here is that the maximum margin of a solution is the smallest, is the most stable under perturbations of the input. Okay, so there are key words that we need to understand. We are going through all of this so that you want to understand what is exactly go is going on. So first, there's a maximum margin solution. What does it mean? And then what does it mean under perturbations of the inputs? Okay. So the perturbations of your inputs, okay, we are, we are almost time. Okay. I want to just uh, pause, I mean, take this one as the last slide. So perturbation of the input, meaning to say that these are your initial inputs. Now, inputs can change. So inputs can change in location. Okay, This one, inputs can go here, inputs can. There are other input data that can come in. Okay, So what does it mean? That means that you are going to look for your solution where the solution will not vary despite changes in the location of the input. That's one. And the other one, what is the maximum margin of a solution? Maximum margin of the solution is the distance from each point, from this point, the closest point, to the line separating them. And then this closest point to the line separating them. The problem, therefore, is to make this margin as big as possible so that to make this margin there, this one and that one. Okay? Why do you think you need a big margin? Big separation margin. For example, in this case here, there's almost no margin. Okay? Almost no margin, well, the line itself is touching on the data. Okay, here, okay, here there's a wrong separation. But here, okay, there's uh, some margin here on the red portion, but on the blue portion, there is no, almost no margin. What is the advantage of this case here when you have maximum margin? of the set line uh, separating the two data. Remember, th these are all the same data sets, okay? So look, all of these pictures are identical. The only difference here is the line separating them. Depending on how we draw the line, it makes our classification much more robust, but much, much more accurate. What do you think? 
Okay, very good. Grab. Can you please answer? What could be the advantage? And what's the disadvantage? For example, comparing this picture and that picture. So we separate the data by a line, right? Yeah. In this case, the line touches the data. This line, it touches here almost like it, there's no room to play. And then here, it touches here also, so almost like there's no more room to play. Okay, compared to here, there's still some rooms here, okay. a large room in fact, for the blue, and a large room for the red. So what's the advantage and what's uh, why would one, we prefer one versus the other? So are you are you still thinking on what to answer? We are saying about maximum margin solution, a solution with a maximum margin. So the line is a solution, yes? So let's maybe let's remove, okay. Each line is a solution. We say this line separates the two, okay, two uh, clusters, yeah? This line also separates the two, this one does not separate properly, so let me disregard that one. This line separates, but this line also separates. So now, of these three, which one is a better separation? Okay. We are saying that we want the maximal margin solution. So the one with the big margin. So here, the margin, almost no margin. Here, the margin is only on the red side. But here, the margin is both on the blue side and on the red side. Okay. So what could be the advantage? Why would, why would we want a big margin? under perturbation of inputs. I mean, if we're just looking at pictures only, we don't even compute. Okay, like for you, yeah, for you as a person, if your mother is very strict and not let you do things that you like, you know, there's no room for you to move around, yeah, you don't like it, it's not the optimal, optimal way of, you know, uh, growing up, you would say, but if your parents will give you some room for you to grow, then you say, oh, I learned all these experiences because, you know, my parents allowed me some, you know, some ways, a large margin of, you know, freedom for me to experience many things. And with that freedom, I learned a lot. So the same thing here. How is that room for moving around applicable? There's more freedom, yeah, there's the keyword. There's more freedom for, for what? Remember, these are just the data that is initially given to you. Later, there will be other data, other data points that will come out. Because this data is just gathered just for us, just for training purposes only. To come out with a line, a separating line based on that data that is given. A separation line based on this data that is given. But later on, there will be other points that will come out. And then now, if another point will come out, our separation line should be able to tell whether that, that point that comes out that was not seen before, we can correctly classify them, whether it's blue dot or red triangle. 
Excuse me. Simple. You have not, I've said, I said a lot of words already. Can you just say one word? Is your microphone working? Okay, come on, so that we, we, we can go now. We exceeded the time already. What do you think? What's the use of the room? Okay, for example, one data comes out here. Okay, let's say one blue dot comes up here. Okay, is it still correctly classified? Yes. Now, what if another blue dot comes up, comes up here? Is it correctly classified? Not anymore. Because the, this part here are the red triangles, and that part is the blue dot. Okay, well, you can come up here like that, and then here, it's not that, you know, most likely there's a little stump points here. Okay, so here, for example, here, we, we separate, we look at the same thing, blue dots here, blue dots there, and then blue dot here. There's a lot of room for other dots to grow and correctly classified there. It's correctly classified, unless, your blue dot is somewhere here. The blue dot coming up, coming up here cannot be any more absorbed by the margin. Although the margin is very large, you know, this still is misclassified. So what we are saying here is that we want to maximize the margin so that there will be lesser error in terms of new data coming up. Okay, despite perturbations of inputs, that means the inputs can be somewhere, maybe here, close to here or close to here, somewhere here, they still remain to be in this side of the classification phase. Okay? So we can, because here is maximized based on the blue, but also maximized based on the red, so that the red dot also has room to play. In case other reds will be coming up here, you know, you can still classify them correctly. That's the room to play, okay? Mm -hmm. You can still classify. Of course, the, the red, red triangle is coming up here. There's no problem. But our problem is somewhere close to the classification line, okay? So now, if we are here, here, we don't, there's no room anymore. So if we move here, yeah, that's, that's classified correctly. But if we move a little bit beyond, okay, beyond here, because there's no margin, you can easily be confused already. Yeah, but here you can still have some room to play and say, hey, these still red triangles. Here, go, move around and say, hey, these still blue dots. Okay, so here, the same thing here. Oh, you can move around. Yeah, yeah classify as red triangles. Yeah, you can still uh, come out here. But your, for your blue dots, there's not much. Okay because it's touching already, okay? There's no room to play for it to go around and say you still have correctly classified. So that, that means that a little bit of perturbation on the input data, it becomes wrongly classified. We understand? Okay, we'll discuss it more. Okay, think about it and we'll discuss it more next time. Okay? So let's uh, let's end here. Any questions? Okay. Okay. Let's start.